great quarry at Oyante Tambo for the giant stones of the Sun Temple. The name of the quarry is Kachikata. This, of course, is the train heading to Aguas Calientes, from which we will take the bus to get to Machu Picchu. The train ride is one hour and 30 minutes and descends approximately 2,000 feet. So, cruising past some beautiful snow-capped peaks on the right-hand side of the train. And here's the road that they don't tell you about that actually goes almost all the way to Machu Picchu. So you don't have to necessarily take the train, you can also take a van almost all the way. So we're descending from the Sierra area, lots of eucalyptus trees, descending into the high jungle, which is very tropical, very similar to a Hawaiian kind of climate. Once again, the beautiful snow peaks. And the sacred river. At this point, if you tried to kayak, you'd be dead in about 25 seconds. So they have kayaking way up that part of the river, but this is like wild. So we're coming up to the bridge, crosses over where the actual official Inca Trail begins. That's the Inca Trail, left hand side, there's the bridge, and again some beautiful snow-capped peaks we're going to have a spectacular day up there. You'll be able to see the Andes encircling all of Machu Picchu. So the vegetation is starting to change. See some bromelids on the left side, which is a very ancient type of uh, plant. So this is the beginning, beginning of the transition between the Sierra and the high jungle. Pretty soon you'll start to see some ferns. Now we're going through another one of the tunnels. Make a wish, make a wish. Now coming back out again. Some major terracing reconstruction on the left hand side. The 
see they're still working on it. Then at the 11 o'clock position, a big complex that's going all the way halfway up the mountain here. And another tunnel. Whoop. So quite a big complex over on the left hand side. Going at least halfway up the mountain. So now we're definitely in the high jungle area. You see tropical plants starting to show up. I gotta get out there and take a few pictures. No, I know that. Still some eucalyptus. Let's go. But uh, coming into into an area with lots of ferns. And also wild tobacco. So even more of a jungly kind of feeling going through this part. More of the ancient bromelid plants you can see. So now we're definitely in the jungle. About 25 minutes to go before we reach our destination. Completely intact rainforest area. Another tunnel. So, massive construction coming up on the left hand side. Going close to at least two thirds of the way up the mountain. get through these bromelid things. Just be patient, you'll see it. There are the constructions way up, two-thirds of the way up. Inca. 
This is a big construction called Winyai Waina, which means forever young. You'll see there'll be a waterfall right in the middle as we proceed. Right through there, there's the waterfall. Okay, we're now leaving the train. To go to the bathroom. As I said, we're now at the train station itself. And through the train station, you walk into the little village of Aguas Calientes. From there, you take the bus. The bus takes you up to the top of Machu Picchu. This is where the coffee shop used to be. And off to the banyo. And now walking through the labyrinth of stores that are still actually closed at 9.30 in the morning. They'll be open later up, later on. Making our way to the bridge. Brian Foster Group. See. Si. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Por favor. So hundreds of little shops. With Gustavo, our tour coordinator. Hello. I'm crossing the bridge with the tributary river that empties into the sacred river. Heading towards where the bus will take us up to Machu Picchu. Line it up here. Okay, down the stairs. And meeting up with our three guides. Aquí. Lining up, lining up for the bus. Okay, we're now on the bus. The Sacred River on the left-hand side. Proceeding along. Our 
we're about to cross over a, a bridge built into the mountainside. Now oh, crossing over another bridge to the other side. Sacred River. And now proceeding up to the citadel itself. The road was built in the 19 or in the 20th century. This is likely the route that Hiram Bingham took to get up to the top of Machu Picchu. He was actually led by a nine-year-old local boy who's, uh, because he kept asking the question, are there any stone buildings around here? And so this boy's father told him, take him up to Machu Picchu. And that's, he took a, a staircase, which you're gonna see on the left-hand side, and proceeded up to the, uh, to the top where they found that there were actually two native families living in the central area. There were two, uh, two men who escaped from the Peruvian army and decided that they wanted to do a little bit of farming. So this is where they did that. And Hiram Bingham was not the first outsider to uh, climb Machu Picchu, but he's the one who made it famous because it was uh, after he took photographs and things like that, then um, there's the staircase right in front. And the entire April of 1913's National Geographic, the whole edition was about his uh, discoveries here. So what he did is he was able to get funding from uh, National Geographic and also one of the major American universities, Yale, very good. And so they hired, I think, hundreds of local people to defoliate the place. Uh, when you look at the earliest photographs, which you can find on the internet, it's not that all of Machu Picchu was covered in vegetation. You can still see the whiteness of the structures, but of course it had been overgrown for almost 500 years. And um, the standard story is, is that Machu Picchu was the um, residence of the high Inca family but it's more likely that it was like a version of Camp David, which is where dignitaries would go in order to spend time and discuss with the High Inca what was going on in their particular sector of the Inca world. So it was more like a spa, with uh, also with a lot of medical practitioners living up there who were experimenting with uh, snake venom to extend life and to cure diseases. So when word came that the Spanish had entered Cusco, then the Chasqui runners came uh, to Machu Picchu and, and told the dignitaries who were there that it's quite likely that Machu Picchu was going to be uh, targeted relatively soon and so that's when they decided to abandon the site. And one of the last tricks that they did was they likely took whatever gold was here and took it to the last Inca city called Wilcabamba in, in the jungle. And as they were 
receding from the site. Two, two major Inca roads went, uh, one from Cusco and, and one from Oyente Tambo, or actually from Vilcabamba, to connect with Machu Picchu. And so they were instructed to destroy about one kilometer of each of those major roads so that if the Spanish happened to approach, then their path through would have been obstructed. But of course, the Spanish never discovered where it was. And the final trick was that all of the, all of the venomous snakes that were kept in captivity for these uh, cures for diseases and also for um, life extension were released. So if the Spanish ever wound up getting onto the onto the site itself, the snakes would drop from the trees and kill them. So just proceeding up, this mountain on the left is Putukusi. And there's a staircase that goes all the way from the valley floor to the very top. And Wilco has been up there. There's a small temple, he says, at the top of it. Now, if you look in front, you can start to see Machu Picchu opening up. And we're terracing on the, at the two o'clock position. And also Machu Picchu is not a national park. It's a wildlife refuge. So human activity is limited to the top of Machu Picchu itself. It is prohibited to go anywhere else inside the sanctuary because that's where the wildlife live. And they don't want to be bugged by humans entering their area. So there are still spectacle bears and the uh, national bird called the cock of the rock lives up in this area. It's an absolute virgin rainforest. Okay, so here we are at Machu Picchu. Oof. And the incredibly overpriced hotel, the Dova. Get together here, please. Okay. Okay. And the entrance way up to the sanctuary. And again, the virgin rainforest. So, lining up to get inside, present capacity about 30% of, of normal, I think. Okay, now we're going to proceed into the Machu Picchu complex itself. Gracias. Well, there again is the mountain called Putukusi, which has a stairway that goes all the way to the top inside the fold of the mountain. And then there we have the Inti Punku, which is the cleft, which is where the one of the two major Inca trails comes in from the outside. And it's also a ancient fortification to make sure that those who are not supposed to enter Machu Picchu are not allowed because it was a secret, secret 
sacred space. And here we have Huayna Picchu, which is in the shape of a human face looking upwards. And then the main entrance to Mark to Picchu is over here. Now proceeding up the staircase, this is the main entrance into Machu Picchu, Picchu. There again, the Intipunku entrance. Now we're up in the bamboo. And now higher. Used to have options as to what level you wanted to go to, but we were forced to go all the way to the top. And lots of bamboo. Okay, finally approaching the summit area. The mountain here is Machu Picchu. It's the name of the mountain, not the name of the city. The city's actual name, Lost. And this is the Royal Inca Road, one of the two major approaches to the complex. Again, through the Sun Gate, which is through that tree. So there's the Intipunku, the sun gate. So again, the Intipunku up there. Inca period construction here. Can you see a building there in the right side? So Hiram Binga, no, the American explorer. He discovered 180 bodies here. Oh, oh, it was here? Yes, here. This is the uh, Machu Picchu cemetery of Machu Picchu, no? In a fetal position, in this position, like, right? No, waiting for the next life, no? The Incas people, they got a similar religion than the people from India. Almost similar, almost similar, no? They believe in the reincarnation, in the next life, 
no? Why in the same position? No? Return to yes. return to <laughs> exactly no? We have yeah. three. The dead people, no, it's represented by the snake. No, the dead people, no? Smart. And the Pachamama is represented by the Puma, no, the stronger animal in the Andes, no, in the world, no. The feline is no, the, the lion is the strongest animal in the world, no, the king of the animals, no. And the condor is the spiritual, no. So there is an ancient legend in Peru, and the, the native people say the humans we got the three the three things, that's why the animals they got ambition of us. No, the animals respect the humans because we have what the puma has for example the puma is strong what the condor has spiritual no i want the snake has the to be like no this is the human that's why the tree no this is called chacana and chacana means chaka means rich ahana means the heaven or the sky, no? This is the a little bit of information. Perfect, perfect. So here you have a perspective of the main section of Machu Picchu and the megalithic core is right there. That's where all the megalithic stuff is. That's the center of the city. The Inca find the megalithic city, they build around it. And then terracing, after terracing, after terracing. Okay, here we are entering the main part of the city. Up there we have the caretaker's hut named by Hiram Bingham. Then here we're going to proceed into the city itself. So, Inca constructions, in this case, two levels. See the terracing, of course. Okay, thanks. Okay, we're proceeding through Machu Picchu complex. Some wind, sorry about that. That's the way it goes. How the hell did he get out of here? So this is the megalithic component we're working our way towards. So we have to go to the right? Yep. Okay. Reorganize the place yet again. So we're going through this way.
Heading towards the Temple of the Sun. So there's the Temple of the Sun. The semicircular building. One window for winter solstice, one window for summer solstice. So pretty soon we'll enter the transition period where we go from Inca to megalithic. Okay, here we have the transition between the Inca and the megalithic. So hopefully going down this staircase will give us access to the megalithic core. Oops. So again, the obvious transition between Inca and megalithic. Remember what happened every June 21st? Winter solstice. Winter solstice. In the morning, early family, sunrise from that way. So this window thinks how to shine the face behind this stone. And with the shutting of this, you see the ball falling. Oh, okay. That happened every June 21st. Family. So transition between megalithic and Inca repair. So this is an obvious example of where the Inca rebuilt the top of it. Now we're at the Intihuatana, the sundial, which actually was more complex, an astronomical calendar. So you see all the different facets to it. And you have four corners, each one pointing to a mountain peak. That one, that one, that one. Oh, wow, yes. This one lines up with that. That one lines up with that, I think. Holy cow. And as the guide said, it's the top of the mountain peak. You know, it's a bit solid, solid granite. And here, very high quality ink uh, craftsmanship. Now it's all the way down. Where should that work two items? Were there one representing the man or the men? There's a two the and the woman. Two. Three items. And once again, Huayna Picchu.
Okay, coming to the last section we're going to film on this occasion. And it's simply two buildings where they've put the Ichu grass thatch back on. To let you see what Machu Picchu would have looked like at its peak. Again, why not Pichu?